Well, hi everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Mark Pence-Stadler. This is part two of the UL Power 350IS engine installation into my Zenith Cruiser. Now, if you saw part one of the UL Power video I made, the engine was in the airplane, but the wiring wasn't complete, the muffler wasn't on, the baffles weren't on. There's a bunch of stuff that wasn't done. It was kind of just when I first got the engine installed. So now that it's complete, I want to kind of give you another overview of the whole installation just so if you're installing this engine, maybe it will help you to see how things go together. Now I was pretty excited because today I was going to start the engine for the first time, but let me turn the camera around and I want to show you outside. We got a ton of snow. There's probably a good, I don't know, seven or eight inches out there and it looks beautiful. There's actually a taxiway there that's covered right now but probably not the best day to pull the airplane out of the hangar and tie it down and try to get the engine running so what i thought i'd do is just give you another overview of the entire installation you can see how everything fits together and if you're installing this engine in your airplane hopefully this will help you one thing i wanted to note is i just got a new camera and it's a dslr camera i bought it as a package it comes with an external microphone and a couple different lenses and a tripod and a whole bunch of cool stuff but I don't know how to work any of it I don't I don't understand what f stop is and ISO and all these other crazy settings so hopefully this all comes out pretty well so anyway here we are we're at the hangar let me turn the camera around and uh, and show you the engine ready here we go all right let me first start with showing you the propeller I have a whirlwind prop on here and this thing is just a work of art. It's a really, really nice propeller. I really like it. It's just the finish on it is just absolutely perfect. Really nice prop. So I guess we could start here with the fuel system. You can see I have this blue fuel line just hanging down to the floor. That will go inside a five gallon jug of fuel. It'll come up into this manifold. It'll go through one of the fuel pumps through this sleeve or this uh, fire sleeved hose here through a filter it comes up into here and feeds the two cylinders here goes through a cross tube feeds those two cylinders and it goes through this return line here all the way down there's a check valve and it goes down into the firewall here and back to the fuel selector what I'll do when I run this engine for the first time is I'll disconnect that from the firewall and put that tube down into the five gallon can of gas so it's a complete system. You'll notice on the muffler I have the cabin heat muff on there with the hoses here that go up to the uh, butterfly, butterfly valve on the firewall. There's one on the other side here for the pilot side. It comes out of here and it goes to the firewall butterfly valve there and you can see on the firewall there's the butterfly valve for the pilot side and if you can see over there on the bottom is the one for the passenger side and it gets controlled with these push-pull controls there Okay, nothing's really changed on the oil system. This was complete on the last video I showed you, but again, these hoses come with the firewall forward kit from Zenith. They're made by Aircraft Specialty, and they come just as you see them there. They're already fire sleeved with the fittings put on the ends. I have installed all of the oil into the airplane, or the engine, I should say. It's the Aero Shell 15W50. And that gets filled right here on the dipstick. All right, now for wiring, a lot of it, well, half of it maybe was done on the other video I showed you, but you did see where it comes out of the firewall here. Here's some battery cables here and power cables. And then these ones are the EGT and CHT cables. You can see they come over the connectors here and they get uh, plumbed to the correct spot here. So. You can see I put this plastic tubing or spiral wrap around the, the wires here just to protect them. So they split off. These are the cylinder head temperatures. One of them goes in there. 
and the other one goes on this side. Now while we're here, if you look at these baffles, you can see it has kind of a doubler plate riveted on here. That comes with the engine already riveted together. But some of these rivets, like this one and this one, I've had to drill out and install from the back facing outwards. See, here's the, the head here. These ones here were actually, they were hitting something. I think this, uh, the pipe here, I think they were hitting on the inside. So I drilled those out and reversed them. On both sides, you'll have to do that. And then also you'll notice, uh, if I can take that out here, you can see this opening in the kind of the doubler plate there. That was too small. And these, these uh, pieces here didn't fit. So you just have to grind those out a little bit. Other than that, the baffles fit perfectly. Mine, you can see right now, are just Clecoed on. You can see there's Clecos here. On both sides, I have them Clecoed. And the reason why is when you get these baffles with the engine, they're actually much taller, and you have to cut them to this shape, uh, even this round part. But the nice thing is UL Power gives you all the dimensions to cut that. So you simply measure it out on here, draw it, and then cut it. But the reason I have these Clecoed on right now and not riveted is just because when I fit the cowling, I don't know if those are gonna be 100% perfect or not. And if I have to take them back off to trim, then I don't wanna be drilling out rivets. So I'll just Cleco them for now. This tube you see right here, just zip tied to the throttle cable. This is temporary. This tube will actually go to a knack event on the side of the cowling. And what that tube is for, as you can see, it comes down here and cools the regulator rectifier. So for right now, I just have the open end zip tied to the throttle cable. As far as the throttle goes, you can see how it connects up here to the engine. It goes through this mount system right here. You notice there's another hole right here because on this particular installation, you can have dual throttles. I only have one on the pilot side, but if I wanted to put another cable on the passenger side, this has a, a fitting for it. So this simply just gets inserted here. This top aluminum piece gets on and then these three rivets get put on the top there. And then the throttle cable comes back into the firewall here where I have that firewall exit fitting. And one of the things I wanted to show you on this side is with the, uh, the cabin heat tube here, kind of interferes with the cable or the wiring on the ignition module. You can see how it's kind of close and rubbing together. So for now, for the first engine start, it's gonna be fine, but I think what I'm gonna do after that is take this whole module here and just raise it up on this mount. So I'll, I'll, I'll raise it up about another inch or so, and that'll give me some more room on the bottom here for the interference. The other thing I had to do was I had to reroute these the engine ground and the starter cable wires, they were running down here and kind of interfering. So I, I took the clamps off and, and routed them behind this plate. But now you can see like this one here is too long, sticks out of the airplane. So I have to cut those again and reroute them. But I have it just temporarily attached right now just so I can get through the first engine start. I think you might have seen this on the other video. This is a GPS antenna. I just made these two L brackets here and then uh, used an Adele clamp to keep it to the engine mount. It's pretty solid. Another thing you guys need to pay attention to is the nuts that you use um, in the engine compartment. You'll notice none of the nuts I have are nylon nuts because they say the, the heat in the engine compartment can kind of melt or soften up that nylon and loosen the nut. So these are all just a, a different kind of locking nut, but there's no nylon on them. You might be wondering why I want to get this engine started now. And the reason why is I need to make sure that everything is wired correctly. You can see down here I have the fuel temperature, or I'm sorry, the oil temperature, the fuel pressure and the oil pressure. So I know the uh, oil temperature is working because it's about 55 or 56 degrees in my hangar. 
and if this will focus you can see that that's indicating properly but I want to make sure those are wired correctly I want to make sure the RPM gauge is wired correctly because all that wiring is under this panel here and I can't rivet this panel on until I know that it's wired correctly so I want to get the engine run make sure everything indicates correctly on the EFIS screen then I can rivet this glare shield on and from there I can start with the windows and the doors and kind of finish up the fuselage. So I think between this video and the first one I showed you on the engine, this pretty much covers the whole installation. It's a fairly simple installation to do. Ray at UL Power is lots of help. If you do have any questions, just email him or give him a call. He's usually pretty fast at getting back with me. If you need to, just pause the video anywhere. I'm just trying to kind of show you the, my installation here if it helps you. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So hopefully this can just let you see how the engine is installed, where the components are mounted. And like I always like to say too, is just because I'm showing you how I did it doesn't mean that this is the only way to do it or that it's the best way to do it. It's just how I did it. So take what you learned from this video and figure out your system and happy building. All right, time for me to edit this video together. I hope you liked it and more than anything, I hope it was actually helpful for you. Uh, if you did like it, please hit the like button and also hit that red subscribe button. That way you can subscribe to the channel. You'll get notified when I have more videos that come out, which hopefully you'll like. And when you subscribe to the channel, it helps the channel grow a little bit and it helps me reach more people like you who might be interested in seeing these kind of videos. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and get back to building.